Some very big games in the top of the table clashes this week, this afternoon, sorry, in the Premier League. Arsenal, Liverpool, City all in action. Good games like that is what Manchester United used to be in. Actual title challenging weekends where it was one of them that you look forward to. Your team actually competing at the top. You know what? We pay a lot of money to watch Manchester United. We expect to be competing at the top. Do we just need to drop our standards and just finally accept it? Like, I... I'm not accepting dropping standards. But I want to ask the question and see where you guys are at with it because we've got more and more stuff coming out. This morning I did the paper round video. If you didn't see it, I stumbled across across a comment uh, that came from Andre Anana in his post-match interview, which more and more I thought about just worried me and worried me and worried me because of what his instant reply was to it. We're going to get into that. We're going to get into more of the aftermath. Some more things have been said. Obviously, the dust has settled, so we can look at it with fresh eyes. Have any of you actually watched it back? Was it worth watching back? I don't think it was needed. To be honest, I think looking at it, I think one viewing was more than enough. You're a brave man if you did watch it back again. It was quite clear that one team were in it and one team weren't. <laughs> and one team nearly really lost out, unfortunately. But this is where United are at right now. This is for every United TV. I'm Adam. We are live, everybody. It is a Sunday show. At least United cannot ruin Sunday. Well, ah, well, we didn't completely ruin Sunday, did we? I mean, Andre and Anna came out and said, well, we didn't lose this game, did we? Fuck, oh, Jesus Christ, Andre. Like, seriously, like... No, we didn't, but (laughs) come on, mate. Like, look at what happened in that game, which is why I'm going in on the standards at this football club. I want to get your opinions on this, because if you weren't, I know everyone, people might have been out earlier on, Easter Sunday with families and everything. This is your opportunity now to actually get your comments in and let me know what you think about this and where you're at with it all, because Andre Anana was asked uh, about Manchester United bouncing back. It's the usual question you get after a game. You get the... Uh, where did it go wrong? What can what could you have done better? How do you think you might have improved your game in that? And then, uh, what's next? Is it important that you bounce back? Uh, and Andre and Al's response to bouncing back was that well, we're used to it now. We're used to needing to bounce back. Uh, standards at United that uh, are up there, one of the greatest clubs in the world. And it's like, I'm going, we're used to it. That, that wasn't me having a go at Andre and Anna in his response. That naturally just came out of him like, this is where we are at. Manchester United are at a level and a standard level, which is just a million miles away. Like, every single ex Manchester United player, all I've looked at and read today is them slagging off this Manchester United team for lack of effort. And lack of will and sheer desire to play for Manchester United. It's like, when does it stop? Where does it stop? This is the question. It's like, how do Ineos change this? Because every single bit of noise that we're hearing is that the same players are still going to be here next season. I've said it myself, there's too much work to do. So how do we change it with what we have got still being here at the football club? By that, I mean the players. This is the concern for me because a leopard never changes his spots. There's been a few players at this football club now uh, and a few of them that have let us down completely this season that have had manager after manager after manager at this football club and never changed. Never got better, always stayed at the same level and just never looked like they were going to get any better. Nothing ever worked. Nothing ever worked under any manager or any tactical approach or any hand on shoulder or a hard hand approach. Nothing works. People always say... uh, People always say that some players like that arm around the shoulder type manager. Some like that for dressing them down, like telling them what's what, giving them what for, like this is it, do or die, some like that. What the hell do Man United players like? Like we've had everything. We've had everything and it's not working. It does not change their attitude on the pitch. Me and Jay were talking last night uh, and the section where we were talking about how we come out after half time. Look, you've got away with it. You've been completely pummeled by Brentford. Five points off the relegation zone, Brentford, again. And you've come in, still in the game, level pegging. What do we do from here? Can we change it up and go out there with a different mindset and go out there and show everyone that we're not that team that's just going to buckle because someone wants it more than us and they're going to work harder than us? No, it didn't. It just was like words in, words out. What's Ten Hag saying? Are they actually listening to the manager? This is the problem we've got right now. It's like Ten Hag will have a vision of what he wants, but if these players don't like it, then that's it. It's simple. That's the standard. 
that's a, that's where I see it right now. I'll get your thoughts on this in a second, guys. But as far as I can see, that's United standard right now. It is. If the players don't like it, they don't do. It's not a case of just getting on with it. Like in the old days, when, oh, I don't like playing with that playoff. It doesn't work for me. But when they go out on the pitch, you get the job done. There are many a teams that have players in that dressing room that don't like each other. But when they're on that pitch, they are professional. Manchester United, I'll say this right now, are not professional. That team is not professional. Now, you can say that they are stars and they're professional footballers and they have got qualities. Yeah, I agree with that. But when it comes to playing as a team, this, this Manchester United team is not professional enough. It's not. It's an absolute... It's a sham, is what it is. And like I said last night, in all many of my rants, like the only people that they're letting down uh, are the fans. Like They're not letting themselves down because they're happy. They're happy. I'm watching Harry Maguire having a great old chinwag with Ivan Tony after the game on the pitch. And yes, the players are going over to the fans. They're being forced to go over, the fan, over to the fans at the moment and cheer them on. But at least we have got that sorted, that there is an appreciation. I didn't see Marcus Rashford going over, and I'm not going in on Rashford again. I'm not trying to make it the show about Marcus, but he is what everyone is slagging off at the moment. And I mean that by them ex-players as well. Like, uh, I said it in the morning show, in the paper round this morning, Jamie Redknapp was going in on Marcus Rashford. Uh, I've heard many others. Schmeichel was going in on Wan Bizzaka. Just cannot be bothered running. Like, if you can't be bothered running in a football game, then it's pretty much time up, in it? You are pretty much out there, done and dusted. There's no point in you being there. Uh, Barbara is in the chat. Hello, Barbara. Uh, she says, why is Anana doing the interview post-match? No one else has got the guts. Loads of no marks. Barbara, absolutely smashing it with the comment there. Love having you in the chat there, Babs. Hope you're well. Uh, I did see your husband uh, at the game before. Uh, kick off against Liverpool. He did come over and say hello uh, and said to say hi for you. Uh, so, Babs, good to have you in the chat. Really love that. Uh, you all know who Babs is. I'm sure you all know who Babs is. Uh, let me see what else we've got in the chat here. Rashford was too tired to walk over. <laughs> it's a Giorgio. Uh, you can treat the players as how you want if your tactics plays attractive football and yield results. Ten Hag wants to be a dictator without providing any of the riches that should come with that. Uh, now, this is where it all starts. And like I said, like yesterday, no matter what we say, sorry, quick drink, what we say about the players downing tools and not showing any effort whatsoever, and you could say this about just simple football basics, like wanting to run, wanting to chase, wanting to tackle, Basic football, some people just avoid that, ignore that, and then go in on Ten Hag. I agree, Ten Hag tactics, bewildering. Absolutely bewildering. But I think everyone, and one thing that every single Manchester United fan can agree with at the moment, is that the players are on the block before the manager right now. But we know, we, we just know inside that the manager is the one that's going to take the flak for it and the blame for it. It's, Ten Hag cannot play a certain style of football with this squad. It can't. The mess and what Manchester United are and how the club have been run and the players that have been brought in. And most of these are Ten Hag players, by the way. Like, you would expect these players to be able to play ball. Like, if you just let's just roll out some of... And this is where I sort of cannot defend Ten Hag. So, everyone will break down. Ten Hag, with the right squad and the right players and the right structure, will work at Manchester United. So... You look at the players that Tenag has bought in. Let's have a look at some of them. Like Name them. Like Casemiro. You tell him he can't play ball? Like, he plays at Real Madrid and has won up team trophies. Like, Varane can play ball. Fast, attacking, free-flowing football. That is Real Madrid. That is their blueprint. No problem. Martinez, yes. Luke Shaw, supposed to be one of the best left-backs in the world, apparently. Can he not play ball? Like... So, so take this as much as far as you want, but Gareth Southgate says one of the best left backs in the world and will always get into his team. But again, you look at it, can he play ball? I think he can. Yes, Bruno can play ball. Yep, yeah, no problem. Christian Eriksen, he was brought in. Rasmus Highland, he was brought in. I think is good as well. Mason Mount brought in, he can play ball. Antonet, you can question that one. 
He brought Anana in so they could pass out from the back. All Anana does is play a long diagonal ball out to Garnacho, smallest man on the pitch, who gets beaten in the air every single time. So, yeah, if he brings players in, different players, is it going to change anything? Like, we still do not know how Manchester United are playing. And that is clear for everybody to see. There is no plan whatsoever when it comes to United on the pitch. Like, I don't know. The inverted winger thing is the only thing I'm seeing at the moment which which is sort of like a plan and an idea. But last night, Thomas Frank, to his credit, uh, and a big credit to Thomas Frank last night, and do you know what? I need to make sure that I get this across that as bad as United were, we have to give massive props to, Fra for, to Frank and to that Brentford team for realising instantly Manchester United's game plan, knowing how to counter United. You know, 15 minutes, United were all right. We were playing okay. We didn't, yeah, we didn't create anything. And some will say that's still not all right, but it wasn't bad. First 15 minutes. We were okay. We had decent possession. And then Frank figured it out. And it was simple. It was just to sit a little bit deeper, sucking United's attack down the left-hand side with wan Bazaka and Marcus Rashford. Knowing that Rashford won't tra trap back and wan Bazaka is very slow on transition back into defence, having gone forward. Everyone knows this and everyone's picked up on this before. I've done it. Peter Schmeichel did last night. Thomas Frank knew and Brentford absolutely opened us up down our left-hand side, knowing that that would be United's weak point. The problem you've got with that then is that Ten Hag didn't adapt back and didn't counter Thomas Frank's move and how everything was. It was, it was embarrassing how easy... Brentford could pass out from the back or one long throw or long ball completely open United up. And I mean carved United up. Scott McTominay, I don't know what his role was last night. I don't know where he was playing. Didn't know Bruno's completely either. Sort of looked like Maynou was the, the, the deepest of the players early doors in midfield. Again, like not knowing where everyone is playing. Like I've just watched Arsenal and City and I could tell you exactly every single player's role and every single position on the pitch that, that them teams and their players are playing. We just don't know what United, and it's just impossible to try and figure it out at times. I can see the inverted wingers, I can see it, Dallow struggling with it, on the left-hand side, sorry, on the right-hand side, and then he moves him across to the left, where he's not done it that much, and brings wan Bazaka, like I said earlier on today and last night, over to the left-hand side, where he's never played before, and definitely never played an inverted winger in that position before, and he just looked like... Uh, <laughs> He looked like a lamb to the slaughter. He really did. He looked absolutely... <clears throat> he looked like someone being thrown in at the deep end without any armbands for the first time. Not got a clue. Flapping at absolutely everything. Uh, Mark Lambridge with the super chat. Cheers, Mark. Thank you. I'm feed up or fed up <laughs> of the chats of fan channels blaming the manager when the players don't do the basics. Once they, are cr once they cross the white line, it is in their hands. Yes, 100% right, Mark. 100% right. But you can't ignore tactics as well. Last night, I went all in on the players. Like, seriously, the players. It's not going to change. I still... Would like to see Ten Hag start next season as Manchester United manager. Now, there were a few rumours and sort of murmurings around. I think they were all made up, to be honest, in hope that Ten Hag would be out and Julian Nagelsmann would come into Manchester United. Now, he's the one that everyone knows on my channel here that I would take and get rid of Ten Hag for. Like He is the one. But I think he, off the back and with Ralph Ranić. And his words ringing in the back of his head would go into United and say, this player, this player, this player, this player, this player need to be out of this team. I reckon he would have the balls to come into United and say, and he would go in and say, players that were playing last night, that started the game last night, he would want certain players out of this club. Like, I can't work with these players. This is what managers will do when they come to United now. And this is why I don't think it will happen. And why Ineos will go to someone that isn't going to cost them as not as much money right now? Because by me by saying cost Ineos money, I mean the manager's going to come in and demand actions with certain players. They're not stupid. They know that these players are going to throw the manager under the bus. I feel like Ineos are going to go for the lesser manager who's ready to make that big, big step up rather than a well-known manager because I think anyone well-known right now with a reputation 
on the line and which it is coming to United, then they're going to want certain things put in place before they come into this football club. Julian Nagelsmann, I think, has got the balls to make massive calls. He would call out Bruno, Rashford, McTominay, Harry Maguire, players like this. And he would make Manchester United make them calls and move certain players on. He knows how he wants to play football and he knows the players he needs to play football. I think Ten Hag right now had an idea in his head about players he wanted to bring in and play a certain way. Like literally, Ten Hag, I could see exactly how Ten Hag wanted to play. I was there on the tour when Ten Hag had his first pre-season tour, the first summer in charge. 100 likes in the bag, guys. Thank you so much. Please give the video a like. Let's get them likes right up there, guys. Well over 200 needed today. 200 needed. I need something to pick me up after yesterday. I really do. So please get liking the video. Hit that, sub hit that subscribe button if you are tuning in for the first time. Uh, well over 600 in the room with us right now. Let's get sharing and get that number up as well. I'm coming to your chat in a minute and all your comments. So be prepared. Get ready. I'm coming in deep. <laughs> Uh, so, oh, what was I saying now? Completely forgot where I was with, I think it was with Nagelsmann. Uh, but in what he would demand coming into Manchester United, I feel he knows what he wants. Ten Hag had an idea. He went into pre-season last season. I was there. I could see how he wanted to play. I could see how he wanted to play. His three-prong attack was Sancho, Rashford and Martial. It looked great. It looked great. I'm not just bigging this up because I was there and I seen it firsthand. It looked fantastic. The very first open training session that Ten Hag took on pre-season, I was there. I was just getting to know uh, my way around and how things worked. We were pitch side and Jaden Sancho played a pass. And in front of everyone, Eric Ten Hag pulled him aside and absolutely slaughtered him. And I mean slaughtered him, went right in on him. Maybe that was a sign for this relationship from the get-go and we should have ca cottoned on to it there and then. Down doing press-ups instantly. Instantly doing press-ups. Now that set a tone for me and everyone around the media, everyone was like looking around going, hmm, okay, okay. So Tenar came in with this power. He came in and wanted to stamp his authority on Manchester United. The three-prong attack... Fred was playing further forward. Manchester United looked great. And yeah, pre-season is pre-season. And I know, Louis van Gaal came in and won every single game in pre-season. And we looked great. And then we lost the opening game to Swansea and looked like complete shit. So I know it counts for something, but not everything. But you could see what he wanted to do. And I came out of pre-season quite optimistic. And then we played Brighton at home and Brentford away. And he tried to play this way, which was high press... High press football with overloading players going forward, risking one on one defending at the back. He realised instantly one on one defending wasn't doable with the players that we had at Manchester United. So Martinez came in, uh, obviously, after the tour, and that helped out a little bit. But, and I'm sorry, Martinez was pretty much there after the tour, so it counted for nothing in what I'm saying in terms of. He brought Martinez in to adapt to after the Brentford and Brighton game. Sorry, completely mixed up there. But yeah, Martinez was still finding his feet. Ten Hag, after Brentford, last season, changed ex changed the whole way he wanted to play. And he's not been able to recover from there. That is, that's 100% that. That's 100%. He changed the way that United played against Liverpool. We had to go more defensive. We had to go more counter-attack. And forced into playing how these players at the football club at the moment want to play, how Marcus Rashford wants to play. He doesn't want to track back. Martial does not want to track back. They don't want to do it. Neither does Jadon Sancho. He had to adapt the way that United played instantly, having only been through the door five minutes. You watch it. It was. It was there for everybody to see. And you know what? We all looked cottoned onto it. There was a bit of an attitude change and it looked like things were moving forward. But as soon as he tried to change anything again, which is what I think is happening this season, again, it all stemmed from pre-season and United got off to a shit start again. Players not happy with Ten Hag's methods and which way he was going. It all went south very quickly yet again. They don't like it. They don't want to play that football. They don't want to work hard. They don't want to work like City, Liverpool and Arsenal work. In the high press. 
Ten Hag wants to play progressive football, but the players won't allow him. The player power at the football club determines what happens on the pitch. And until Ten Hag has the balls to throw these players under the bus, and now I think it's too late because Ineos are just all too willing to pull the trigger on the manager, I think his time is done. Like Rashford could have been set an example of. He could have played the way he wanted to play this season. The players might not have been as good and you might not have had that impact, but you could have played Ahmad or Anthony ahead of Rashford easily. You could have kept Palestra. He would have run all day long for you. He would have played that high press. And yeah, the other side of it, Manchester United might not have created anything. We haven't got that creative spark, but let's be honest, Manchester United are the best out of position, out of possession. In possession, we're easy to play against. Out of possession... We can do things. Nick the ball and on the trans uh on, on the transition when we've just stole the ball off the opposition, no one is set and you can get something out of it. So we are forced to play the way that we play. And we have been forced since what? Since Ole Mourinho Mourinho tried to change it. The only manager that managed to implement any style of play at all was Louis Van Gaal. That was it. We all knew what he was doing and None of us really, a lot, a few of us actually liked it. Uh, I wasn't keen on it because it was putting me to sleep a lot of the time. But he actually at least had a game plan. And the one manager out of everyone since Felix Ferguson, that you could see what it was as well. Matt Lambridge, another super chats. Uh, if you don't want to play uh, how Eric Tanag does, F off. It would seem a simple solution, Mark, wouldn't it? It would, but it seems to be a million miles away from being able to get there because he keeps coming out. I'm backing these players. And I'm just like, in the end, he said like last night, like I praise the players for for hanging on in there and showing a little bit of uh, battle hardness and attitude and just not losing the game. <laughs> God, man, you were handed the game on a plate when you didn't deserve anything and still threw it away. It's unbelievable what he's coming out with. And when he came out with a comment regarding Brentford against Manchester City, stop talking about other teams Deal with what's in front of you yourself. I've seen Brentford against Manchester City. And Manchester City were very lucky in that game. <sighs> yeah, City are competing for the title, Eric. And you're going to get them games every now and then. Manchester United struggle against every team in the league. And it's an argument for every game we've played, the ones we've won, we didn't deserve to win any of them games. There is an argument there. Okay, time for the chat. Let's get into what you guys are saying. Get your comments, questions coming in. MDR Samurai, uh, thanks for last night, by the way, mate. I won't forget that. In with the super chats like a madman. Love it. Uh, he says, Adam, uh, you can't expect wingers consistently to track back 30, 40 yards every time we lose possession with the huge gaps in the midfield. It's zero sense. No, mate, it isn't zero sense. Wingers do track back. Like... Our wingers just don't do anything. Like, even if it was a more... Even if you went from nothing to half-hearted track back, it's something. Defensive duties in a game. It's not difficult to track back. It's the willing to do it and not be a prima donna that's the problem. And I know everyone is going in on the midfield and everything like that. No, the wingers do not come back and help at all. If you're going to play inverted fullbacks, you need your wingers to come in and cover. And Rashford and wan that's on Ten Hag. That is the worst combination you can imagine when you're playing someone like Brentford who play counter-attacking football with long diagonals to a centre-forward feeding off him to the wider players. It's absolute football suicide. And he's seen it going wrong in the first half and he did not counter it. He did not change it once. That, for me, is what will get Ten Hag the sack in the end. There are ways to deal with this, but he isn't big enough, it would seem, to drop the players that aren't playing well. People will come back and say, look, Rashford's playing there because his numbers add up and he can do something out of the ordinary. I know that, I know, but if that's all we're clinging on to, then the manager's going to fall. The only way any manager survives at Manchester United is if they drop Marcus Rashford. That's it. You're not going to get anything more out of him. No manager is going to change the way that Marcus Rashford plays. They're not. They're not. Can you get more effort out of an Anthony? And can you sort of structure a game with Anthony playing over Rashford? Yes, you can. More, I feel. 
I think Anthony's coachable. I don't think Rashford is. That's a big statement, I know. But I just think he's he thinks he's already made it. He really does. He does. I can see a player in Anthony wants to work hard. Yep, the end product is not good enough. But I'm dealing with what we've got here right now. In the summer, I think Anthony should be moved on. So should Rashford. So should quite a lot of other players. But what we've got right now and what Ten Hag can do with this team is make a serious statement against Chelsea. Uh, 1-0 is good, you scoring the winner is great, that's great I'm talking about, Kaz, Kaz won today 1-0 by the way, it was a shocking game, loads of missed chances but Kaz did get the winner and they move up to second in the league, so big up Kaz in the chat please everybody. Uh, must play says, Eric Ten Hag has, has no passion, the Italian managers, the Spanish sometimes ex except Pep and Scottish managers have passion, Eric Ten Hag is boring and very unmotivating as a coach, even LVG was more passionate than Eric Ten Hag. Must play is questioning Ten Hag's passion right now. Uh, Gerton says, uh, player power is why we are losers. Eric Ten Hag let the players go uh, who would do the running. He's kept all the loser players thinking they will help him. Uh, we all know the players are finished. Uh, Mo Janice says, uh, majority of these players need to be sold after the season and that includes Bruno, Rashford, Maguire, Varane, Lindelof and McTominay. Varane, I think you've been a bit harsh on. I think he's had a good season. I do. Uh, but I feel like he, in the end, will be moved on anyway. Uh, <clears throat> yep. Uh, I am just checking for any other news uh, coming in. Yep. Uh, certain other people changing their... Uh, Sunday video times again. <laughs> That's true. Eric Ten Hag has zero charisma. Uh, yes. Very winnable. Our players like to play against Chelsea style. They just don't like low blocks, which like seventy percent, uh, which is like seventy percent of the league. If Thomas Frank can make something out of Brentford, Eric Ten Hag should be doing more with this mob. Uh, but I still back him. He should be getting more, but the players should want to do more as well. Like, we cannot forget that these players have been massively underperforming all season. It has been an absolute shocker. An absolute shocker for Manchester United this season. And these players, they really have let everyone down. Uh, playing Chelsea will be entirely different. I agree with that, Graham. Uh, they are poorer without the ball than United. I do think that the Chelsea game is probably the one that we could probably get something out of. Like, it's perfectly set up for United. It's like, we are there after a poor performance. We need someone to bounce back against. Chelsea, we've done this before with them. We beat them and then we went and got done by Brentford, I think it was. It was embarrassing. And I feel like that's going to happen again this week now. Chelsea at Stamford Bridge, it's not a great hunting ground for United. If we lose to Chelsea, then, oh my God. Tenag is in a world of pain. He really is. And these players are going to be... Oh, they're going to be hung out. They're going to be hung, drawn and quartered by the fan base. They really are. Because it has had enough. Just talking to general United fans right now, it's like they've just lost their passion and their love for the game watching United. Just because they're watching United. It's not like they're not supporting the team, but they just can't be bothered. They can't be bothered doing it. And that's that's the big worry right now. Like, just the attitude and the players. Alien with a super chat. So LVG offered us wine and mince pies. Legend. The very next season at Christmas, he didn't know. He stormed out. He stormed out. Hey, you fat man. That was the one. <laughs> I remember it. Good old LVG. Get in there, son. That's what it was all about. He was. But yeah, if United do not get anything at Chelsea and then let, head into the Liverpool game... It's curtains. And I said this morning, I actually am worried for United getting in Europe in any in any sort of form now. Like Europa, Europa Conference, we can be taken. You see how close Brighton ran Liverpool today. I'm still not bigging up the Zerbi, by the way, on that uh, at all. But hey, they run Liverpool close. They're not a million miles away if results don't go our way. We're talking about Man United going to Chelsea here and hoping to scrape a win. And then we're talking about Liverpool where we're not expecting much. That's that gap from the likes of Newcastle, West Ham and Brighton completely knocking United down to eight for ninth in the league if we don't pull our finger out and get our act together. We're running out of these so-called easier games. That's what it is. 
MDR Samurai with another super chat. I don't have a problem losing the top six team, losing to the top six teams, but we are getting dismantled by the likes of squads led by Frank De Zerbi, Ariola Silva, and Nuno, who are apparently unable to manage at United. It is comical and it is embarrassing not being able to compete against these teams. I understand what you're saying, MDR. Like it, I really appreciate the super chat as well, mate. Uh, and from you as well, Alien. Thank you. Uh, but the the bigger issue that I've got is the one I just said there then. Like, talking to normal United fans, it's like, like some of them, like, you go and speak to a United fan. It's like people I know and friends I know. It's like, oh, yeah, and you know what? I can't be bothered. I'm not even I'm not even bothered watching them. Now it's like, the love that fans had for this football club, the players have killed it. The style of football, just their attitude and everything. It, it is destroying the fan base. It really is. I said last night, there's no connection between the players and the fans anymore. Like, the fans are losing faith in the manager because the players are. And the fans have got no time for any players. Ten Hag was bigging up the fans to his credit last night in his press conference. And he was saying, look, at the end of the day, the fans deserve all the credit. No trains back to Manchester. Stupid kickoff time. He's saying this before in his pre-match press conference as well, but it's, it's like, and they were there and they were singing all the way through. I've seen videos of fans uh, within the stands at Brentford and there wasn't the enthusiasm as there was at the start of the game. Like, it just, when you're there, and I can only say this through experience of being there, especially away from home, when you go there, you're united, you're proud, you're loud and proud, and we are fantastic fans, the best away fans in the world, but when you see your team just completely fall apart the way they do and then the bands are coming from the own fans knowing that you've got nothing left you have to stand there and take it on the chin as a United fan and just take the criticism and humiliation you sort of lose love you fall out of love with your team you do, you're like, how can you put me through this how can you not understand what's going on right now, like show some respect to the fans by actually just putting in a shift like, give more. It, it really is getting to that stage now where United fans cannot be asked watching the team. Like, eh, so what? Let me know what the result is afterwards. That's the sort of mentality you're getting from a lot of United fan base right now. I've never seen it like it. Like, last season I thought we'd grasp something back, but that's been completely shot down this season. And we are now uh, at a stage where it's just fans don't know anymore. Don't know where to go with it. They don't know if uh, they should be watching or if they are going to get criticised for not watching it. Uh, it's awkward. Like Some people would rather just go out and spend time with their family and not be stressed out watching United because all it does is wind you up. Uh, please give the video a like, guys, and do download our Sofa Score app. Bottom right-hand corner there at the screen, guys. It is the best football app out there. It is completely free, guys. They are our partners here on FUTV. Please do download the app. It all goes to helping the channel and... Everything uh, for the channel and building it up and making it better. Uh, Sofa Score, our partners here on FUTV, is much appreciated if you do go down and download it. Fastest updates, stats, goals, everything in game action, and all the news off the pitch as well about your club, all the way down the pyramid and all other sports as well. And we were talking about it last night. I brought up a player last night on Sofa Score while we were watching the game. Scott McTominay in particular, and it just broke down how awful he was. Uh, but that's what Sofa Score does. It gives you all of the details as it happens, and it is brilliant. And the best thing is it is free. So please do scan the QR code. I'll drop in the description. The link is right there, guys. Get downloading the best app out there. Uh, Kobe is deadly in the eight, but uh, put McSauce there and keep Casemiro on the bench. Alien says, the only icing on the cake is if one of the players' uh, shorts fell down, taking a shot at goal. <laughs> God, I don't know. Louise, uh, I don't care if the players uh, they sign are well sought after or totally unknown. If they come in and do their jobs, they have to walk the walk, no doubt, though. Uh, yep, Eric Ten Hag looking like he is drowning. He does look completely demoralised at the moment. He really does. Uh, my nephew Lenny, 
Need to recall Donny van der Beek and play him with Maynou in order to get top five. No, mate, we don't. Donny is not the answer and never was the answer and will never get Man United in the top five. He just simply is not good enough. Uh, and I think that's been proven by the loan spells he's had as well. Like, nobody wants this guy. No one wants him. Uh, Kobe needs uh, a six that plus uh, in puts in the legwork uh, that allows him to be free uh, mentally to let loose. Only player that somewhat fits that role is Amrabat. Mr. Miracle's giving the Amrabat shout. Like, what can we do with the players that we've got right now? Is there any way? And guys, what I want to ask you is, like, who would you change for the Chelsea game on Thursday? I've come out and already said, look, I would drop Bruno, I would drop Rashford and McTominay for the Chelsea game. And people are, are talking about resting players. If you want to give them players a kick up the ass and rest them uh, and get them ready for Liverpool, whatever, uh, then I think they're the three players that would make the biggest mark right now. Like, I love Bruno. Everyone knows I love Bruno. But look, if it is getting to him and fatigue is kicking in, then Ten Hag needs to be ready to drop him out of the team. Like, Mason Mount was showing last night, like, he can do a job for us. He has got something. And given the chance, you just don't know. Like, you're at a stage now, Eric, where it's do or die. You're at the last throw of the dice. Like, go out and try something different. Because everything that you're doing, and this includes that full two weeks preparation leading up to this game against Brentford that you had, that we looked absolutely clueless for. Do you know what? Go and try something different. Uh, Michael says, if you was a Manchester United manager, uh, would you drop Marcus Rashford for Chelsea game? I think I just answered that one, mate, before you even put it in. Yes, I would. Uh, I don't like Sir Jim Radcliffe eyes. Uh, they ain't symmetrical. Daz, random. Uh, but whatever floats your boat. United spotlight. Bruno and Rashford have to be dropped. They won't uh, be, but uh, they have to be. <laughs> George Oliver says... Uh, the problem is a lot of players are bad, not uh, not right level this for years. Uh, Joe Glass, at least one of you can play football. I don't know what that's about. Uh, hi, Rajat. Hope you're doing well. Why am I bat isn't creative machine like Bruno? Uh, that's why he won't play. I think he's a different role completely. Mount's better than Bruno. He's a better team player, better on the ball. People hate on Mount. He's a very good player. I don't think Mount is better than Bruno personally. And when it comes to team player, I think Bruno does put a lot in for the team. I don't think he is uh, that individual player. I think he does give everything. I just don't think United know how to handle Bruno, honestly. And taking Bruno out of the limelight, I mean, I'm all for it. I am. I mean, there's not one player that deserves to be in that team right now in that Man United squad more than anybody else. So, yeah, I'm all for Bruno being given a rest and taken out. Like, I want to see other people given a chance. And I've said it before, and you all know I love Bruno, but like I said, if he's not performing, then we need to think of the team first. Agree, Mount is a very good player. Uh, works hard uh, in the press. Uh, Bruno works hard in the press. I'm just saying. Mount and Bruno, 28-year-old Casemiro, would have been nice, says Rajat. Uh, there is a reason for that. I always say uh, to everyone, uh, if I see it, Ten Hag sees it and in the press conference, he also uh, indicated this. I feel he is just showing our limits to Ineos. <sighs> it's a risky business because he won't have a job doing it. Uh, last word on Donnett, nobody broke him. Completely unsuitable for the Premier League. That was from Graham. Michael says, I would play Bruno. That's fine. I understand that. But I, honestly, I'm looking at anything changeable right now. And trying to do something a little bit different. Uh, but yeah, truthfully, I don't see how Ten Hag changes it. Because knowing Ten Hag and how stubborn he is, I just don't see it happening. I don't. And it will be his own fault. It will. He will get more out of Mason Mount, Casemiro and Antony for the players that I said drop. Which was McTominay, Rashford and Bruno. I think he will get more out of the game. I do. He'll definitely be more solid and he'll definitely get more work rate. Guaranteed. Uh, Mount is way better than Bruno Adam. He's younger, technically better than Bruno. Disagree, disagree. All apart from the younger bit. He is younger, that's it. He isn't better though, in my opinion. 
Uh, very similar. Uh, you do unpopular opinions on your videos. How about this? I reckon Arsenal v City was rigged, says Daz Salford with a super chat. That is very, very, uh, I don't know if it's unpopular, but it's outrageous. <laughs> Cheers for that, Daz. Uh, over 200 likes, guys. Thank you very much. Uh, keep the likes coming in. Make sure you're hitting that subscribe button as well if you are tuning into the channel for the first time. It is our Sunday evening. Happy Sunday, everybody. Happy Easter as well. Hope you've all had a fantastic day. Uh, of course, you had a better day than yesterday because United weren't playing to ruin your day today. So, yeah, hopefully you've had a good one with the family and you've not chowed down too much chocolate. I think I've had a little bit too much chocolate. We'll probably have a little bit more later as well. Put a film up. Put a film on, feet up. Get the box on, you know what I mean? Like, there is boxing tonight as well, actually. I think about that. Well, yeah, Adam, it will be the same lineup against Chelsea. Rashford, Bruno will play. Ugh, I know, Henry, but you know what I'm doing. I'm just trying to, I'm trying to change things a little bit. Just trying to mix it up somewhat, as you could say. Uh, three, five, two, three centre backs: Delo and Wan Bazaka, high wing backs. Bruno, Mount, Mainu, and Ahmad, and Highland up front. Oh my God, yeah, MDR like a pigs will fly, mate. With Ten Hag, he just never changes the formation. Like he hasn't got a plan B. This is the problem. Like we can talk all the things that we can see or think the players are going to fit into formation tactics wise, but at the end of the day, we know nothing's going to change. We know nothing's going to change with Ten Hag, and that's the painful bit. It really is. What's the point of playing Menu on his own in a bloody in the bloody middle? Says uh, MUFC ninety nine okay. Uh, Madison says, uh, yes, start Mount. I start my nephew over Bruno and McTominay. A lot of people just completely giving up on Bruno Fernandes. I, I, I'm not having it yet. I'm not giving up on Bruno yet. Uh, I am for like taking players out, though. Do you know what I mean? I just think there's still more in Bruno. I really do. Uh, it's, uh, it's Clark. Uh, Clark's fighting tonight. Uh, Fraser Clark. He's going for the British title, I think. Uh, that's who's fighting, Gray. Uh, Adam loves eating his Easter chocolates and then eats mine. Yep. it's That's normal, isn't it? Like, you're only helping out. You're only helping out, like, they look like they're struggling eating the chocolate. You help them out by taking some off their hands. That's the way Easter goes, isn't it? That's what it's supposed to be. Yeah, fair's fair. It's always a 70-30 split for me. I think 30 to Kaz, 70 to me. I think that's reasonable. Going off our sizes and proportions, I think. I think that's very good. Uh, you want to try fighting Kaz for the mini gems, though. My, my God, like, seriously. <laughs> it's like a leading snake protecting its eggs. No chance. Like, snapping, no. Not having anything. Uh, Alien with the super chat. Cheers, Alien. Adam, you got Easter egg in your beard. Trust me, mate. I don't miss any food. You can get Kaz to come back on that one. Uh, there ain't anything in my beard. If there was, I would have figured it out and ate it by now. So, yeah, no. Struggling eating chocolate, Kaz. Yes, you was. I was helping out. That's all that was going on. I was just helping you out. Uh, many players like Bruno as captain. Yes, they do, Rajat. They do. A lot of players. I think Bruno's popular in the squad. He really is. His performances have been way off. I can't even argue that. I can't. Unfortunately, we have been at this level for years. Uh, we don't know if the players are going to turn up from one game to the next. Going to Old Trafford used to be used to go there with confidence. Used to go there knowing that United were going to give you a performance, and now you're just going there with hope that someone is going to do something different. Uh, I did put a poll out earlier on. There's loads of people who have chat uh, have uh, got involved with that. Uh, should we start Mason Mount against Chelsea? 88% of you have said yes. Uh, and who is dropped out of the team? Is it Bruno? Is it Rashford? I mean, for Chelsea, now I'm I'm literally, I'm getting in all of my leader players right now. Casemiro's coming in. I don't know if Martinez is going to be any fitter before the Chelsea game in the next few days of training. I don't know if he can get ready for this game. Uh, he looked a million miles off it yesterday. So... I'm not too sure if I would bring Martinez in. I, I need to know that he's going to be 100%. Like, maybe we could get him on for another 25 minutes at the end. But if the Brentford game was anything to go by, then he's not ready. 
he's not ready and shouldn't even be in the bleeding squad. Like, but yeah, maybe we could get another 20, 25 minutes out of him uh, and get him match sharp and ready for Liverpool. I mean, I'd love Martinez to be fit for the Liverpool game. I am fearing that game so much right now. Like, it's going to be scary. Liverpool will be coming for revenge. It's more important in the league as well. I think winning that FA Cup, deep down we all thought, this is fantastic. We love it. We've ruined the quad. We've absolutely buckled the quad. And I've seen a, qu a comment from Graham right at the top of the show where he said, Manchester United are going to ruin the party for Liverpool. Well, on the day, Graham said that the FA Cup probably wasn't as important. I would take a league win against Liverpool, but we're not going to win both of them. So... Yeah, I do feel like it could be another bad weekend. Uh, Martinez looked shite yesterday, not ready, not fit. He looked like he was uh, well out of his depth, says United Spotlight. I hope Rashford be dropped, says Michael. Gavin, uh, drop Garnacho and Rashford for Mount and Ahmad. Could well be. Uh, Garnacho was poor as well. I think the whole international break and everything just, I think was just too much for Garnacho to handle in the end. So, yeah, I just feel like we are... <clears throat> we have got to use our squad. Like, just do it. Do something different, Eric. Graham says, Danny Olmo is built like a Groot, uh, totally uh, unsustainable uh, for the Premier League. Uh, we have our first donated member. No, we don't. We have a member who has renewed after three months, which is London, 1965-7. Legend of a man. Absolutely loving that London. Bear is the answer always. Yes, I think it is too, mate. Alien Tenno with another super chat. I think that's about your sixth or seventh of the day, mate. Absolutely love you. Cheers for that, Pete. Uh, Adam's uh, Kinder Egg. What was uh, in it, Adam? Season ticket price rise. Uh, loves the gym. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, season ticket renewals are coming up very quickly, aren't they, guys? They really are. I think a lot of United fans have now also got their tickets for Wembley for the semi final. Oh, that's coming. Fast, like a lot of people were saying last night. If we played like we did last night against Coventry, there's no guarantee we're going to be in the final either, which is a scary thought. It really is. Uh, United Spotlight, I agree. Uh, I'd rather uh, rather won the league game versus Liverpool. I fear this upcoming Liverpool game badly. Uh, no Almo. Uh, need a clear out starting with Rashford, says Daz. I wish. Uh, on a City Arsenal game, Pep sub Foden, even. Full stop, then even. Not sure, Graham. But yeah, like Pep's not afraid to bring anyone off or drop anyone. And when you bring in the likes of Docker and Grealish on, it's not really that difficult, is it? <laughs> I, I know what you mean, what you're saying, but yeah, he, he has got a squad that is all tuned into what he wants to do. And it's easy to make substitutions when you know that bringing another player on isn't really going to change much. Uh, and London has just donated a membership, which has gone to Brett Gordon. Welcome to the Members Club, Brett. You did just drop a message in as well, which says United should buy uh, Murillo from Forest. 21 years old, centre-back, left-footed and played every game since joining him. Absolute baller and being watched by every top Premier League club and European giants. Yeah, I think there's a lot of young players uh, in uh, in the Premier League right now that are being watched and touted for bigger clubs uh, there is. And do you know what? I think this summer we're going to see quite a lot of moving. We're going to see a lot of players moving around. I think it's going to be one of the busiest summers that we've ever had. Not so much for fees, because I think financial fair play, unless it changes, uh, will hamper that. But I think you'll see a lot of players moving this summer. A lot of squads need strengthening up and they need more depth because of the amount of games that are coming, especially the top six with the way that the European football is going to be structured and changed next season. But, guys, that pretty much is the end of the show. Thank you so much for getting involved, spending time out on your Easter Sunday. I hope you all had a fantastic day. Uh, but before we do go, we have got five new members in the chat, donated by Alien, who is the legend of the day. He really is. He has smashed it out of the park. New members are Richie Clubsport, Andrew Shaw, S. Madison, Dave147, Ever ready 79 welcome to the members club. Make sure you thank Alien Tenno in the chat, guys. That is legendary stuff right there. Six new members on the stream. Thank you so much, Alien. Absolute baller. And will I see you on Sunday, Alien? 
Will I see you there, Pete? Let me know. Mr. Miracle has dropped his first super chat, uh, which says, Big up, FUTV. Respect to all the work you put in. Mr. Miracle, as always, legend. Thank you so much. Thank you. And guys, that does conclude the show. Give the video a like on the way out. If you do so, we should get up to the 250 mark on likes, which would be a nice way, nice round number to finish up on as well. Uh, and that is us all done and dusted. As General Foodie just drops another membership in. No one wants me to leave. Uh, Man U has taken that membership. Uh, thank you so much, General Foodie. Uh, legend, as always. And we are moving on. Happy Easter, everyone. Have a great weekend. We will be back tomorrow. I'll let you know what the content is. I may get out and about tomorrow. Uh, but we will be all over the news no matter what happens. Uh, it is a bank holiday. Enjoy it, guys. Have fun. Don't drink too much. Be safe. And I will see you all later on. Have a good one, people. And again, thank you. Up the red.